Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing with another tech video. Today's one's about camshafts. Now a lot of you know I'm a sonar head porter, but before I begin my camshaft discussion, I need to say these words and they're very important and powerful words you need to listen to. A bad camshaft cannot be fixed with a good set of sonar heads, but a bad set of sonar heads can be helped with a good camshaft. I'm saying that because um, there are many sets of heads out there that are floating around, not just mine, many others that people sell that are made to look horrible by a poor choice in a camshaft or by trusting a guy that's a um, camshaft salesman who's really good at selling promises but not good at delivering promises. Um, so. The only, the, the, here's part of the reason why I even got into camshaft is because of this. Um, there's, you sell a bunch of cylinder heads and then you get people calling back and they're like, it didn't make the power. And you might have sold that same set of cylinder heads, the same ones identical to a couple other people and they're making great power. So you've got a bunch of data to back up what they're doing. So you have to look and see what they're doing different. And then what you see is you're like, let me, tell me your combo. And you hear the combo and you hear the camshaft. And the first things I'm thinking is that camshaft is out to lunch. That is so far out from where it should be. So I'll try to tell the customer and they, of course, rightfully so they're not, they, they feel skeptical, like someone's just passing the blame. But when I'm hearing the camshaft specs and I've heard them from other people that have been successful and I hear these ones, I instantly have to tell them, Hey, look, your camshaft's not what it needs to be. And of course, sometimes they're like, well, I got it from this guy and he's known for camshafts. Um, he does a lot of sells a lot of camshafts and this is what he's known for. These are going to work great. Does he do cylinder heads? Well, then I guess they could say thing if he said back to that guy, that camshaft. So then the guy calls the camshaft guy. The camshaft guy goes, ah, I know what I'm doing. I sell a ton of these. I sell a ton of them. It must be your cylinder head guy. You need to get a different cylinder head guy. He didn't know what he's talking about. And so then in the customer stance, you're getting bounced back and forth. Well, I will tell you, um, I am a poor salesman. I, I, I could probably sell 10 times more stuff if I actually really tried and pumped myself up or pumped up some of the stuff I do, but I just don't do that. Um, because of that, I, I self-reflect and figure out what went wrong. Whether If it's my end, I, I want to know because again, I'm going to sell to more than one customer. And besides, for my own good, because I have to say, I'm probably one of the more selfish people you'll probably meet as far as the engine stuff. I want to know what's going on because I want to know how to make myself better through your combos. So I, yeah, I sell a bunch, but I want to know what's going to make my end product better. So I'm going to be selfish and I want to know. So if I just pass the blame and say, oh, it's just a camshaft, when really it's something I might have done, it, that doesn't help me. But the other person, so, so usually if that happens, I'm like, man, I, you know what? I. I probably could have done something different on the heads. Camshaft looks fine. I probably could have done this and this. You know what? Just send it back. Let me see if I can't make them a little bit better. On the flip side, though, a lot of the camshaft guys do not take responsibility. It's they always they're a pass the buck people, and I shouldn't say a bunch. Um, I'm just telling you in general because I'll get customers call back, and I feel so bad for them because I know that they're feeling like everybody's blaming someone else, and it's never their fault. And in the customer side, all you're doing is just spending money. So anyway, because of this. I was like, I got frustrated. I'm like, I'm going to do camshaft. Well, I got in with comp cams. Um, however, I could probably spec out a bullet cam or anything else if it needs to be as well. So today's video is going to go over some of the stuff that I've heard about different camshafts as far as myths goes and try to go through some of it. If you're expecting like, man, by the end of this video, I'll be able to spec camshaft on everything about it. I'm going to be good to go. You won't be. Because even, even me, as much as I uh, sell camshafts, spec them out and stuff for the, my stoner heads, I'm still... If I still don't think I'm an expert or by any means, um, I'm not the guru and that's the problem. I think a lot of people think they're experts when they might be farther off. So anyway, we'll just jump right into it. I wanted to start with that because I really do think you need to hear that. So let's, uh, let's get started. Okay. So what I've got here is two camshafts and you're going to see here in a video what I've done with those, but I want to go ahead and show you. So this first camshaft right here, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, these are small block Chevy camshafts, but um, it doesn't really matter, but I do want to show you that this one, in case you're wondering, is a billet core. I only sell billet cores. Uh, I do a flat tap occasionally for customers, but those aren't billet. But anything that's a roller, hydraulic or solid, it's getting a billet core. Why? Because it needs to be a billet core. 
If there's someone sells you something else, it's because it's saving them money, flat out. Now, they're like, well, what about the distributor gear? You could do this, okay? See this? This camshaft right here, it's a billet core, it's a solid roller, but this has a pressed on cast iron gear. Now these cost more, I'll go ahead and warn you. You might as well have just gotten a billet one without it. And you, how can you tell? See that pin right there? That's because they, you can tell up here, it's pressed on and then they put the journal on and everything's with size to it. These cost more. In the end, you probably end up spending more on the extra on this camshaft than you would if you just got a bronze distributor gear. We're like, well, what about worrying about where, where with the bronze distributor gear? If you're worried about that, think about this. The sonar heads, most of the guides are bronze. So it's not the end of the world. You know, I, I'm going to straight up tell you, I've seen many. It's very rare I see a bronze distributor gear wear out. Whereas I've seen several cast gears break. So, and on cast stuff too. Not on the distributor so much, but on the distributor itself. Not on the cam distributor part, but on the distributor itself breaking gears. So, um, just telling you, I, my prefer is, um, unless you're just totally street, is to do a bronze distributor gear. If you're totally street, we could do this. It costs more, but easy to be done. Anyway, billet core. And how could you tell otherwise? This other camshaft is also billet. This is the one that's going to be replacing it. As you can tell, there's no press into it. So this one's going to require, of course, a bronze gear. Now, they do make a composite one, but I don't use it. I know some people do, but I don't. But anyway, the whole purpose of our discussion today is about the differences between these two camshafts. So let me cut to a clip of what's been done to them so I can start showing some of the stuff. Okay, so as you got to see, that's something called a cam doctor. Um, there's probably some place around you that does it or has one. So it's not like it's super rare, nobody has it. Um, they're pretty useful. I haven't bought one, I have no need. I mean, I have a need, but I don't know that I could justify the cost, they're pretty expensive. But anyway, what I have here is the two camshafts got off the cam doctor. Now this one, I'm gonna go ahead and show you, you're gonna be kind of surprised. In 2012, I entered the Engine Master Challenge with the 406 and finished sixth. It was the highest place I'd ever finished. And that, that was the first year where they stopped paying top six. I was like five points away from number five, fifth position, which I pretty got, could have gotten with the jet change. But if you heard my other story, the balancer was coming off and there's no way I could have risked it. However, he probably could have made changes too. Now, if you read the com, I'm sorry, com, but if you read the magazine, you would have saw some cam specs. The first few years I used the exact specs and gave them to them. Then I realized no one else was doing that, so why should I do it? I'm showing you exactly what was in it. So this is the camshaft that was in it. Now I had a rocker ratio on the intake side of 1.85, an exhaust of 1.7. So pretty aggressive. And at that year, if you remember the rules for that year, they said you could not have um, more than 650 lift. So 644, 646 on exhaust. This was my duration. It was a 240 and a 246. Now, these other numbers become super critical for what I'm about to say. By the way, my lobe separation was 103.8. Now it says center line 103.6 because you just manually enter it. Actually, I installed it at 100. Okay. Um, anyway, so that's this camshaft. We're gonna talk about some of the specs and I'm gonna do with one of the myths that I keep hearing is, you don't need to have more lift than this. 600 lifts enough. Why would you lift it more than that? Why have more lift? If it, and I'll tell you, if you hear a camshaft guy tell you that you don't, you don't need more lift, it's not gonna make it go any faster having more lift. It almost makes you should run. Cause I've heard that from camshaft guys have told me that. And then I stop and I'm like, mm, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at someone else. Because for the most part, that is a false statement. Now I know you're thinking, you don't know what you're talking about. This is not a lie, I'm putting a comment down. I'll show you why in a minute. But the, the part of the reason for not um, having more lift, it, the only reason why, well, a couple of reasons for it is if your valve train can't take it, in other words, you can't put in a spring that will take more lift, you obviously can't have more lift on the, on the cam because your valve train can't have it. Um, that's really would be the pretty much common for LSs. And the reason why most of them are limited to like six, 650 lift until you get to aftermarket heads. Most LS guys are running stock heads and their spring diameter is really small and their installed height's really small. 
due to those two factors, you really can't have a lot of lift, like say seven, 800 lift, because they don't spring has to collapse a certain amount and you just don't have enough proper spring height to make that happen, especially with that diameter to get enough spring pressures you need. Now, aftermarket heads, there are changes. And because the spring pocket's now bigger, though you can put in taller valves because they require maybe shaft rockers and you can do many multiple things. The other thing with LS heads is the trunnion upgrade only has so much flexibility in it too, so how much can you actually lift? Also, the stock rocker, or stock rocker arms from the LS, even if you did the trunnion upgrade, if you're trying to put solid roller pressures on them, they can't take them. And then you'd have to switch this to shaft mount rockers. So it's hard to tell a LS guy who spent maybe $400 on his motor that he's gonna have to spend 1500 on a set of shaft rockers to go on it so that he can run a 700 valve lift. So instead they're like, you don't only need 650 lift, you don't need any more. When reality is saying, you can't afford any more. Um, but anyway, we're gonna get to it because this is the camshaft that I was telling about because this engine's in for a refresh. And this is the one that's going in it. So we're gonna look at the two differences. Okay, so let me show you. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing for a very exciting video. This one is something different because you're like, this isn't cylinder heads, why do you have a camshaft? I'm actually at Lucido's machine shop, they're in Tulsa. They have this um, cam analyzer by Performance Trends. They also have the spring tester too. I use a Buxton, they use this Performance Trends. It's a really good deal. But the biggest thing is, this is a, um, it's, it, they have different names for it, cam analyzer, cam doctor, whatnot. But what it actually does is it measures the true um, lift duration and all the specs from your camshaft. And you're like, wait a minute, don't you get that when you get this nice fancy cam card? Uh, that's correct. I'm gonna pull this one out. Probably should've done that before filming. But this is for a, uh, hold on, I'm set this down, sorry. There we go. This is for the engine master's engine that I had done. It's in for a refresh and wanted to switch camshafts. This is the specs that it says it's going to be. What this does is it tells you what it actually is. And you can look and it will tell you all the stuff. Now it's got different reports too, and I can't wait to share them with you because I keep getting people that have the argument of um, more lift, you don't need more lift. And I've got the, um, the duration numbers versus lift on here. So you can look at some of the stuff so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's much easier, but anyway, Really cool tool, glad I got to use it. Um, if you're in Tulsa, visit Lacito's Machine Shop. Nick would love to do this for you. You guys take care. Okay, so before I go over these two cams and show you the information, I wanna start with just a really short story to kind of help you out with what I mean about increasing the lift. In 2008 on the Engine Master Challenge, we had a solid flat tablet camshaft rule. And um, so in the, in the beginning, I was just doing some testing at, and at the local dyno that I used at that time, which was Dunsworth Machine. And since it was a flat tap at camshaft rule at that time, we were breaking it in and I had the break-in rockers on that had a, would give a 1.3 ratio. So the total lift at that, on that camshaft was 539 with the 1.3s. Um, anyway, dynoed it and I wanna say it made 539 with the 1.3s, because we were just doing some basic checks, breaking in the engine. And then we made some pull, check the lash and everything, just because I said, let's not pull them off yet. Check the lash, make sure everything's good, put the timing in, put fuel in, and then make full pulls and get it tuned pretty close. Made 539, okay? Now the only thing, the next thing we did was we took off the stud mount rockers with the 1.3 ratio, and we put on the shaft rockers of 1.9 ratio. So the lift went from a 539 to like a 660, so almost a tenth. It went, and then nothing else changed. The air fuel, everything else stayed exactly the same. And the horsepower jumped from 539 to six, no, sorry, 585. So it, it gained almost 60 horsepower from just the lift. Now, some of you are gonna be putting comments right now. Will you also change the duration? Yes, increasing the um, ratio on the rock arm does add a few degrees of um, duration as well. But for the most part, that's pretty much lift. So that's why I'm telling you strongly that the lift does increase your horsepower. But let's look at the two camshafts. So this one, like I said, is from the Engine Master Challenge from 2012. This camshaft, even though it's only 240 degrees of duration on intake and 246 on exhaust, this one made 632 horsepower at home and 577 foot-pounds of torque. 
when I'm done with dyno, which his dyno really is tight, so I would say it's correct. Because almost every time I went to the Engine Masters after getting off this dyno, it read higher there at the competition. Now the same camshaft at the competition, it made 612 and about 577 torque, so almost the same torque. On another dyno, Gaines dyno at home, now we did do a little switching, and I changed valve springs, and went to a bigger carburetor and at that point it made 670 horsepower and 612 foot pounds of torque so with just this camshaft now this one's being replaced with this one and the two cam cards the, the from the cam doctor will look at how they're analyzed and you can we can see some of the things about it so just let we'll start off with the basics I never look at advertised duration. I know some people do. I don't pay attention to that one. If you, most cam guys really just want to know about the 50 thousandths, and that's all I ever care about too. So we'll start there. The old camshaft had a 240 at 50. The new one has a 248. We'll call it 247.8, but just call it 248. Now, both these are with the 1.85 rocker ratio. So the cam doctor actually takes this into account when it's spinning the cam, so it's actually able to tell that sort of stuff. So the duration from the cam card did change a little bit because of course it's a different rocker ratio. Because if you ever get your cam cards, they're calculating the cam lift, or sorry, a valve lift with the, with the stock rocker ratio, which in a small block Chevy, it'd be a 1.5. The same thing goes with LSs. So if you get a cam card and you see, well, man, that lift looks lower than mine, shouldn't it be higher? Remember, they're calculating it in the stock ratio, and if you run a different ratio, of course your lift's higher than what the cam card says. This, though, already took that into account because you enter it when you do it. So the intake lift on the new cam is 748 to a 644. The exhaust 240, on the old camshaft is 245.6 with the 1.7 ratio. It gives me a lift of 646. The new one, 253 degrees of duration. So I did add more exhaust with the same rocker ratio, 1.7, but we also have more lift 689. Now this is probably the bigger change. The lobe separation is 103.8 on the old camshaft. Because I will tell you this, this is some little cam tuning for you. And I'm not gonna get with the opening and closing points because that's really the key. But man, that really overwhelms so many people. So I'm just gonna stick with duration and lobe separations because most people can kind of understand that. I don't wanna deal with the opening and closing and where to put those and how to, I will lose you. But we'll just make it simple. Typically, when you have a, a lesser lobe separation, so in other words, the number goes down, those tend to make more low speed torque, um, tend to. Um, usually though, the other thing about this is we try to put, um, at least me, I try to put lower lobe separations on, cam, on engines that have less compression ratio. Because what this does, it builds up more dynamic compression ratio. Um, the engine feels like it's got more than what it does. And typically what this happens with this tighter lobe separations, you get more torque um, down low and also builds more torque anyway, but it really is only more beneficial if you have um, less compression ratio. So in other words, and I, some camshaft manufacturers still do this on ones with high compression ratio. I don't agree with it, but whatever. Like on this one, we were limited to 11 half to one. But by putting the lobe separation so tight, it really built up the um, engine's torque, especially down low, because you're scored from 2,500 to 6,500 RPM. So you really wanted to make as much oomph down low as you could. So that lobe separation there, tighter one, really helps it in that range. Now, if you have a higher compression ratio, I tend to open that up, so I'll make it wider. The other thing I'll go ahead and warn you too is whenever the lobe separation, the tighter you make that lobe separation, so say you went from a 108 to 104, the tighter the lobe separation is, the worse it is for piston to valve clearance. So everybody thinks it has to do with lift. It really doesn't, and I'll kind of show you in a second. I mean, it does, but not near as much as two factors. The two factors that affect your piston to valve the most is your duration at 50 and your lobe separation. Those two are more important. Okay, and I'll show you and just to give you an idea in just a minute because this sheet actually gives you that, some of that. So anyway, um, the old camshaft had 103.8. It worked fine, like I said, but the new camshaft, I have 107.1. It was really supposed to be 108, but this is what I mean. The cam you get isn't always the same from what it should be from the cam card. So 107.1, which is fine. But you might say, why did you open it up? I mean, the engine itself is going to have the same compression ratio. 
because the problem with these ones too having a tighter lobe separation and i'm speaking in generalities if you think this is set in stone and it applies to every engine you're missing the point you won't get that from me these are generalities they apply to some maybe most but not definitely not all typically when you also have tighter lobe separations the power will jump up on the curve and then it will start dropping off slow uh, pretty quickly with a wider lobe separation typically it doesn't get up as steep as one of the turk curve but it will also carry it longer before it starts dropping down um i think this is going to help him more in his drag racing and street deal probably be better for this although i'll warn you your vacuum idle whenever you have tighter lobe separations your vacuum idles also sucks it's worse so anyway i think this is going to help him more at the strip but it also gave me some piston and valve clearance in the room. Here's let me let me explain too because the other thing people say also is well you got more lift that's gonna well I have room for a 740 lift my piston the valve. Check this out. On my sheet here it says the cam lift at top dead center. Truly, which I bet you I could have done it, but I not my machine. I don't want to mess with them. You probably could have figured out what the lift actually would have been at uh, 10 degrees before and after top dead center. That's where it's actually at its tightest point, not at top dead center. But this gives us a reference point. Because let's say this number is higher than the other one. I know that I have either more or less clearance. So now this camshaft's 748 lift. And it's got more duration. And I told you just a second ago, when you add duration, it makes the piston of valve clearance less. So this number at top dead center should be higher than the other camshaft. If you look, it says 0.098. This is the old camshaft, 240 degrees of duration. Look at that, 103. It's only a 644 lift, but it has less clearance with the less lift at top dead center, which means I have to tell you this, this one is going to have less piston and valve clearance than this, even though this one's got way more lift and more duration. I'm like, well, how'd that happen? Lobe separation. When you spread them out, typically you gain more clearance. There's your little tech bonus. Let's look at the exhaust side now. So the exhaust, the 246, this exhaust is way higher at 253. So that, I mean, it's quite a bit more duration. You might say, why did you add more on? Because the head itself I did a little bit different with, but usually when you add more exhaust duration, and this is not, again, generalities, but I, I wanted to add more because I want to carry the power band further. Because typically if you add a few more degrees of exhaust duration, it will carry the power band further. And that's kind of what I want. It won't make any more peak power, but it will help hold it on longer. This one would fall off, but having less, it helped make more torque in that range that I needed for the competition, um, which was great, but it would fall off. So in the racing application, when you're, you would get your peak power and then it would drop. So not ideal. Anyway, this one, so of course I added. Well, if we look at it, this one tells me, at, by the way, the worst lift, the worst um, piston valve usually happens on the exhaust because after all, remember minimum, I'm not being super safety, is 80 thousandths intake clearance and 100 thousandths you need for piston the valve. Now, this one says the lift at top dead center is 116 um, at top dead center with this cam. Well, if I look at my other one, it's 115. We're like, well, you did gain there. Yeah, but also that duration is, a, this duration is a lot more than that one. So there's something to kind of help you out with. So there's something that kind of gives you the information. This is why it's cool to have a cam doctor because your cam cards never have that. Now, here's something that also does really good this cam doctor does give you. This tells me, I'm looking for it real quick. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Low area, there we are. This tells me how much total area is available. And I'm sure there's, I'm not exactly sure how it comes by, but what it's trying to say is this is, you can think of it like this. This get the more area, the more area that the cam has, the more chance for air to come in. If you increase lift or increase duration, it's going to increase, period. If I look at that, that's 33.63. Now, this kind of the, this kind of backs up why I say you need more lift. It will make more power. Let's just compare these two. And you're like, why are you comparing the intake to exhaust? This camshaft, for the record, the same lobe design was on the intake and on the exhaust which most people don't do, but I did, because Comp, and I'm going to have to back up a little bit, Comp has a ton of lobes available, and I mean a ton. So if I said, um, I want a camshaft, this one's, two, we'll say 246, I want a 246 duration camshaft, what do you got? Comp probably has, and I'm being generous, 
probably has 15 different designs that have 246 degrees of duration. Some have more lift, some have less lift. Some, the opening ramps different than the closing ramps. Some have more aggressive opening ramps. Some have slighter, um, softer closing ramps. There's so many. Now, as you know, I'm a comp dealer, but the bullet's the same way. I don't know if they have as many as um, comp does, but they have a whole wide variety too. You might say, why do they have all that? Well, because each one has an own, its own little purpose. So but skipping all the cam specs, you can have um, the exact two cam specs be the same, but the lobe design be different and the engine makes dramatically less or more power because some are more aggressive than others, which are great for like drag racing. Some are more endurance applications, easier on a valve train. Some are in between and some are just different things to try. There are so, so many. Um, the only reason I'm pointing that out is because these are the same. Um, lobe designs. Typically, you don't put a softer one on the exhaust because you don't need it to open super quick like that. Um, but anyway, let's compare these two. The reason why I'm comparing these two and it has to do with my lift is because if you look at it, this is a 246 and that's a 240, we'll call it 248. That's two degrees of duration difference. Okay? So as far as duration wise, they're pretty close to the same. I wish I had one that's exactly the same, but I don't. But let's look at the lift. A 748 to a 646, okay? So almost a whole tenth of an inch more of lift. If we look at it just from this, the lobe area from this one, remember it's only two degrees more, 33.63 to 3198. So it's gained slightly more than two degrees from that, from the more lift, which doesn't seem like that big a deal until I show you this next sheet. But because we're gonna compare these two because these are the closest in comparison to duration. And this should kind of help out, prove out why I say more lift, the better. Okay, this is another report that the um, analyzer could print out. What this report does is it tells me my duration. You can think of it like a duration at different points. This tells me my duration at different lift points. Now, I want you to point this out and listen to me closely because some of you are going to end up in comments because you didn't listen all the way through. These are the lobe lifts, not valve lifts. So even though I have a 185 ratio, this is not the duration at 0.300 with that. This is the lobe, just the lobe, okay? Um, same with this sheet. So in other words, if I'm looking here on the lobe lift at 200 thousandths lobe lift, I've got 166.66 degrees on, on the exhaust side. Remember, I'm gonna compare the exhaust from the old camshaft to the intake for the new camshaft because they're only two degrees different. But this is gonna kind of show you. So let's begin. The duration at 300 thousandths right here, on this is the, the less lift camshaft. On the exhaust side, so if I take my lobe 3.300 times 1.85, that's rocker ratio, it would have been giving me five, 555 thousandths lift, total valve lift. And at 555 thousandths lift, the valve was open 109.2 degrees on the old camshaft. Okay, you with me so far? Go to this one. On this one, this is the intake side. Remember, it's got two degrees more in duration. I will say that. So we'll take off two to make it kind of even. At the 300 thousandths lobe lift, multiplied by the same rocker ratio, would give me still 555 thousandths. So same exact lift by the valve. This one has 116.9 degrees of duration. It's open for that point, for that time. So, but you're like, well, it's two degrees more. Let's take off two degrees. That's 114.9 compared to 109.20. It's got way more duration at 0.555 than it does with the smaller one. You know, like, so, I don't have ones that are exact, but that, that, even, even if you take off the two, it still has dramatically more. You're know, like, what's that mean? If I give you a flow sheet, and I've heard this several times, um, and I says, let's do a make-believe head. Let's say it flows, because LS heads are kind of this way. Let's say it flows um, 300 or something at 600. And then at 700, it falls off a brick, off the wall. It goes from 300 down to 270. Well, someone was going to say, well, you don't need a lift, the cam that goes to 700. Why would you need a cam that goes to 700? See, all dudes backing up. You're just wasting your time. What purpose is that? This is why. It wasn't backing up at 555 thousandths. This is where everything's good. So why would you not want to have more lift if you can have more duration at the time when it's doing fine? Even though the head's gonna back up later on, this is why more duration helps you, not more duration, more lift helps you out. 
because of this, you're getting more li you're getting more time at good lifts, the lower lifts. Even when even though it's at peak lift, remember it doesn't spend all of its time there. It spends more of its time. You can clearly see at the lower lifts. But now I've got more of my time at 555. That's great than I do with one with less lift. Now, you're like, wait a minute, what's this mean? This is something that you need to point out though. If I had, let's pretend that they are the same duration. If I have the same duration on that one and on this one, but this one has more lift, what it does do is it causes the valve to accelerate faster. You're like, how can that be? Think of it this way. If they're the same duration, that's this valve through the whole travel has to go 652 thousandths and 200, let's say, I think this was 246. And it has, we'll pretend they're both the same. This one would have to travel 652 thousandths up and then down and 247 degrees. This one has to go 746 thousandths in the same amount of time. Well, you know what that means? This one has to move faster than that one because it has to make the valve open and close in the same amount of time that this one does, but it has to go a tenth one way and a tenth the other way in that same period of time. So the valve's acting faster. You're like, that's awesome. It should, means things are getting snappier. It does, but here's the disadvantage. Because of this, the duration with the more lift, better. But the downside is, because the valve's moving faster, it's more things to, that can go out of control. What I mean by this is, if you've got a spring here that's controlling your, this camshaft at 650 lift, and then you threw this one on, it may not be in control anymore. What was happy here will not be always be happy here because this one, the valve's acting faster, it's moving faster, everything's gotta go faster. The spring, which was able to take care of this at this point, probably, may, I shouldn't say probably, will definitely need a different spring for this one than it does for that one because its requirements are different. This has now got to control a much faster acting valve than this one does. So that's one of the downsides is even though you can have more lift, some people are like, well, it's not making as much power, probably because you're in some valve train control issues because the more, mostly, and this is the valve the spring needs to be different for this setup because of the movement of the valve. So that's, that's one thing. But from a power standpoint, if you're able to control that and you got your valve spring set up, this will always make more power than that. Same durations. It always will um, because you get more down here. I probably shouldn't say always. There's always going to be a, a, yeah, I'm using always now. There's always an exception to the rule. But for the most part, this should make more power because you're always, you've got more duration at the lower lifts where the head's like, yay, happy. Um, even if it wasn't. So hopefully this kind of explains things. I probably could, I probably, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I'm going to have to do another video. There's no way I can make this work. This video is already going to be too long and I don't know why I thought I could cram most in. But I'll leave you with a couple more nuggets of knowledge I'll save for the next video. Uh, how I like camshafts. Typically me, when a customer asks, well, how much lift do you think I should, you're going to, or how much lift do you want to, are you going to put on the camshaft? I tell them this, how much are you comfortable with? Okay. Because if you just listen to the video, you think I'd put in as much as I can. Well, that's partly true. The, what I do think is I ask them what they're using it for. So, for instance, I ask them how much they're comfortable with. Because let's say I said, you know, I'd like to put a 900 lift in your, can, in your engine. I think that'd be great. Well, do they have enough piston valve? Maybe not. And I'm not, it's not the lift, remember. But typically, there's only so much lift you can have for duration. Eventually, you have to increase the duration to make it happen. But LSs do have the advantage this way because if you have a um, bigger cam core like the LSs do, um, it's easier to get a bigger lift in there because it's a bigger lobe, um, more diameter. It's, it's easy. There's a whole bunch to it, but it's easier. Anyway, um, I'll ask them how much they're comfortable with. Well, if they say they drive it on the street, obviously I'm not going to put a 900 lift camshaft in there because that valve is actually traveling through the guide more, so the guides wear out more. The spring has to travel more, so guess what? The springs wear out more. Everything wears out faster with higher lift. Um, so I won't go as much as I can. I'm like, well, I think reasonable might be 700, you know, especially for a big block. Um, no problem. We'll work with that. Now they're like, well, wouldn't it be better 650 be safer? True. But you want to make more power? Yes. And I also think how much actual street driving and driving? I'm like, well, I drive maybe 25 miles a year. Well, you're not going to really wear out stuff in that time. I wouldn't think. So I'm going to give you a little bit more lift than probably what most people would consider standard. So I always, it's, 
whenever they ask how much lift you're going to put in it, it's to me, it's what I think will last for what you're doing a reasonable amount of time, okay? And try to get the most in there. Now, obviously, there's other things that affect it. Um, maintenance and other things with it as well. So that's one of the things I ask. So there's your little nugget of knowledge, but I'll give you just a couple other quick ones. I mean, super quick. Me, typically, I like less duration and more lift. What I mean by less duration is there are several, 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 several cams out there right now that are in engines that are, I think, are way over duration. When I say out to lunch, I mean way out to lunch. Either there are several that will have way too much duration, not enough lift, and to me, they're creating a turd. Because when you add a lot of duration, what you end up doing is killing some of the cylinder pressure so it can't make torque. You also don't have much lift, so then like it, it, it's not moving as fast. The valve is, so it's probably easier on valve train parts for sure, but it didn't make as much power as it could. Let me just give you an idea. Let me pull this one out if I can find it real quick. Yeah. This is the cam card from my big block um, that's in my 565 that's in my Camaro. I'm just gonna show you this because I think some of you need to see this. This is the duration at 50 on the intake side on my 565. That's a 4.6 bore, 4200 stroke. That's the exhaust duration. That's the lobe separation. This is the lobe lift. Yeah, 516, 485. This ends up like 930 or something with my rocker ratio. Why am I showing you this? Notice the duration, 275 on intake. This thing made peak power at 7500 RPM on a 565. There are so many over cammed as far as duration small block Chevys, I cannot even begin to tell you. Because your duration is more than my big block. Uh, so you're like, what's that mean? I don't, so shouldn't it be? There are always some variations. Don't take it that way, that this is absolutes. But there are some times where you, you have so much duration that you don't have cylinder pressure. Think of it this way. This engine's so much bigger. It has so much more demand. If you have a 406 and it's got more duration than this, Unless you've got some weird thing going on with your heads that are like really restrictive and you got to get something out of it or some weird rule, you've over you've overdone it on duration. You've killed your um, you've killed any low end torque you could possibly have, and you've got it goes back to the beginning of the video. You have made a good cylinder head look bad. So this I'm just showing you this to kind of give you an idea. Are you sure you're not over durationed? Not over lift, durationed. So. And by the way, this may not even be the best camshaft. I've said this before in other videos, but I'm not other people understand. One camshaft will get you close if you're good. And two more, you should be better. Which is like, no one's going to spend, you know, buy three camshafts to figure out which one's best. But anyway, I'm going to do other, another video. There's no way I can capture enough information and give you guys some informa more information in this. So look for other videos later. Probably won't be next week, but look for them later. You guys take care and see you later. Okay guys, I know it's probably not what you wanted for a camshaft video, but I'm gonna have to. I looked at how long it was taking, it was too long. I'm gonna do other videos, so I'm gonna do my little sign off here. Thanks for making it all the way through. Um, I'm going to do another one. I, I just gonna have to break them up. Anyway, um, just since you watched it this long, I'm gonna go give you a preview on Fridays. I took the S10 to the track, and since I know some several of my subscribers have watched that video about how the um, about me switching the S10 to a sniper um, back to the Demon and using the sniper just to do data acquisition, and the question is which one was faster, the sniper, which was perfectly tuned by the way, or the Demon carburetor? I'm gonna go ahead and answer it for you, but I'll give all the details on Friday. The carb was significantly faster. Anyway. Uh, we'll talk about that on Friday. See you guys.